Hey, what's up everybody? I got a real fun video planned today. Recently on the market, there's been two P320 aftermarket grips released, and uh, it's starting to be the thing with like, everyone's picking a side, and this one's the best, and that one's the best. So before I get into that, we'll introduce them. It's the Polymer 80. It's their entry into the 320 aftermarket grip. And the Wilson Combat. So I'm just gonna do a quick overview, comparison, and give you my thoughts. Everything I say is it's kind of subjective to how I shoot, what I feel. I mean, you really can't say one's the best or not the best or one's the worst. We all have preferences, so keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of the videos I watched is um, people coming out and, and they'll say, well, this grip, I saw one in particular with the P80 grip, and it's, well, it's shit. Go with the Wilson, it's shit, it sucks, and I'm going to have to disagree with you. It's absolutely not. I'm going to post video of me actually shooting both of these at the range, and like I said, all my video and everything aside, it's all what you feel. Now, that guy may appreciate the Wilson a lot more. And he may have valid reasons. Maybe he shoots the P81 like crap and he shoots better with the Wilson. But that doesn't mean the Wilson is. Anyways, let's get into the video. Alright, so first off, I'm going to take the Wilson out of the way. And we're going to talk about the P80. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't know the actual designation. I will have it posted by the time this video is up of what P80 actually calls this. This is the P80, the guys who make the Glocks and um, the AR-15 lowers. This is their, they also make fire control units for 320, but this is their entry into the SIG market with uh, the pistol grip. Let's get into what I like about this. First off, the size. I don't like small grips. I like, uh, personally, I like something bigger. And this is the perfect size for me. It fits my hand great. Uh, it's got a bit of a square shape to it. The back rounds off a little bit, but overall, I kind of like that coming out of the holster and your indexing. kind of gives you a good index coming out, but if you don't like that, if you like more rounded grips, or uh, someone compared it, someone compared it to the, the Glock, and eh, yes and no, I don't really see it. I think it feels more like a 1911 in my hand, or a 2011, than, than kind of um, the Glock. But, I mean, in the end, they're, they're pistol grips, you know, they're kind of all the same shape to one. There's different degrees in which they, they're canted, but it, it's a, you know what I mean, it's a barrel on a, on a handle, so... But it's uh it's overall closer to the X5 too. I'll take uh this is an X5 grip module. I mean I've I've hacked on it a bit. It's been customized, uh, quote unquote. But it's kind of overall in size and in shape to the X5. So and that's what I shoot regularly. So of course I'd be more comfortable with the P80 being it's it's more familiar to me. Uh, the quality of the material is good. It's, I mean it's it's polymer. But I'm sure a company called Polymer 80 will have really good polymer. That should be their thing. So, the material is good. I really like, and I didn't know I liked this uh, until I started shooting it. And now I have to go buy another TXG grip and re, and re go over the way I modify it. Because this beaver tail, uh, I've always not liked beaver tails in the past. I've liked like shooting the original P320 grip. There's not really much of a beaver tail and, and Glocks. So I, I never came up with beaver tails, but this one works really well. And unlike the X5, they don't have, you know, it doesn't extrude much from this side. Like the X5, this this whole area is meant to be under your hand. But it, for me, in the way I shoot, it just keeps me from getting high Why I feel. I mean, everyone has a different experience. But the P80 doesn't do that. It, it's a decent sized beaver tail while being pretty narrow. And you can get your hand really high up there, and it performs good. I really enjoy it. Like, it's got to the point where I'm about to... Go and spend another 200 bucks on another TXG grip so I can find a way to make that beaver tail more like this one. Uh, so the undercut is great. They Again, they're one of the companies that kind of, I don't want to say they pioneered the undercuts, but you started seeing it um, with like Agency Arms and Zev and they started doing the undercuts and it got real big and everybody started doing undercuts. But P80 was one of the first companies to do undercuts and it's a great undercut. The overall shape of the trigger guard is very ergonomic. It's very out of your way is what you want. But what I like about it too is they gave you the option for a double undercut. So if you look there, you can see that little bump there and then it recedes back up. So that's the double undercut. And they left it they left it blank. So if you chose to stipple it yourself, if you're somebody who wanted, which I am going to do in the future, if you want texture there, you pick your favorite stipple and you just stipple in that area. Or if you're somebody who's not interested in that, it just stays smooth. But I was very happy to see that they took the time out and then they left that option open. Polymer 80 has always been big with uh, people customizing 
It's kind of what their kits are about. Add the grip texture. Grip texture, it's it's pretty good. Um, the thing with grip textures on polymers, and 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 I've never had any long-term experience with polymer radius, so I'm just extrapolating with my experience with most other polymer weapons to include SIGs and Glocks, is that it never, I mean, this could be wrong, but it never really lasts. I mean, you shoot, I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna go away tomorrow, but eventually it wears down. Stippling, silicone carbide, uh, factory stipple, it all eventually wears down, so it's very grippy now, but I can't attest to a year from now, two years from now, if it's still gonna be this grippy. But out of the box, very, very grippy for lack of better term. All right, so I'm gonna go over the cons now. So the magwell, they don't have much of a magwell. It's very narrow, so your reloads have to be on point. Now this is a, I find as a con, but it's not really a con to some people. Um, so it's actually pretty cool, and I'll point this out to you. So this is the magazine release button, and um, I mean it's gonna be a little hard on camera, but if you see, it doesn't feel the same like the traditional. You know, that's the, the on the regular 320 grip. That's the regular magazine release and even the Wilson has more of the regular style you know the TXG the X5 and it felt it not only does it feel different but it feels drastically different and I started looking around the gun and if you look inside I don't have too much light here if you can see yep you can see it right about there so they use the same system for the magazine release as they do in the Glocks it's that little bar that little rod it hooks into the magazine button and it turns one direction or the other and that'll separate the magazine from the magazine well which is opposite from the 320 because the 320 there's actually a spring in here that runs horizontally and you compress the spring which will move the magazine lock out of the way and the magazine falls out and you uh, by this point in the shooting you should all know how that works but i just thought that was really cool that said it's not as positive as the regular sigs so i i'm not a fan of it the best i mean i'm sure training train is the ultimate nullifier it overcomes all so the training you get over it all right so now we're going to get into the wilson combat uh i think it's the wc320 this, was, this one was an easy one to remember so right off the rip it was it's a little too small for my likings out uh, narrow so if you notice i've been shooting the TXG and you can tell one is a little thicker than the other and I've gotten really accustomed to it and like it works for the way I shoot but this was a little narrow and some people might like as far as carry goes a concealment but for my taste that was that would go in my con category uh, it I, I was actually kind of deceived when I first saw it online because if you shot that EDC 9 the the pistol grip it's got a big fat palm swell there's a lot to grab onto so i was expecting that out of the box so when i pulled it out and it was narrow it kind of kind of took me uh for a little bit of a loop because i was expecting a fatter grip still very serviceable. so again personal preference the texturing is good they have that signature wilson although the stuff on the side i think it's more decorative than anything it's why they went with the actual kind of rough grip here on the front the front strap and the back strap because that's where it counts the most but the texturing on the side i mean if you shoot competition and you're shooting a match in August, you know that this isn't going to do you too much good. I mean, unless you put some pro grip on your hands, it's, that's not going to help you out too much. I mean, again, the front and back strap, different story. And uh, to go back, I mean, that stuff will wear with time. All polymer does. It's just, um, you know, it's part of having a polymer gun. The quality of it looks good. I mean, it's Wilson. You expect a good gun from them. Ergonomically, it looks good. Closer to the standard grip, I think. When I uh, when I first saw it, I kind of like, and uh, you know, I'm kind of sorry to admit that I thought this, but I kind of thought that like, you know what I mean? Oh, they just bit the standard grip and put their little their little design on there. But it, it has its differences, um, the trigger guard and stuff you see. But that's what I thought initially because it does look close to the the standard grip. But you see the beaver tail is a little longer in here. All right, something I do really like about this that. Um, don't really have in the other in the polymer is this magwell a very generous magwell it's uh it's kind of reminds me of the glock gen 5 magwells where it's just kind of like you don't need to put a, a you know an exterior magwell on it already is good if you're halfway decent at a reload then that's going to help you out a bit undercuts decent can't complain about that not a fan of the rounded again a personal preference so this uh the wilson 
I, I, bought, I brought both out to the range the other night. Put plenty of rounds for both of them. Got a good feel for them. Now this is probably only on will only be on my my 320 or my gun. But I had an issue with it. It didn't fully cycle. It would shoot a round, chamber the next round, but it didn't. For some reason didn't go. And the only thing I can think because I their their gun I really don't have any malfunctions on. I, I put it through the gambit. What my hypothesis on it is that I've been shooting that that 1320 fire group for five years now. I've taken it apart several times. Uh, and you'll see in the videos how I shoot. That's pretty much how I shoot. I shoot once a week, and then there's the matches, and then any uh, other other training I go to for defense training. So it's it's pretty much been to its wear. So all I can think is that it's it's pretty much you know looser than its tolerances. So fitting it into this new grip grip was probably a little tighter for it. But that was only at first, and kind of broke back in, and we were we were back in the fight eventually. But that was an issue I had, and uh. Comment if you had the same issue putting it in too. I'd like to know if it was just me and my old beat up gun. So I'm going to run video of these two guns shooting. And you can uh, kind of judge from there. But remember everything I said here is pretty much all my preference. You could feel absolutely different. And you could choose your gun on just aesthetically alone. Which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm coming from the, uh, the corner of I shoot USPSA. I really enjoy it. I feel it's probably the best way to to kind of break in your equipment and test it. Uh, it's going through even if you don't have to be a grandmaster competitor and going nuts, going through all the matches and section matches and area matches. You just go visit your local match once a month. And, you know whatever your carry rig is or your duty rig is, they're perfectly fine with uh with guys coming off the street with their duty rigs on. It's how I started. No one's gonna give you any flack about it. They encourage it. We're happy to see it. But if you go into a, to a match once a month and just test this stuff out, I mean, you don't know what you don't know and until you put all those rounds down range. This would be something that I would have, like, honestly, just out of my preferences, I would have never bought the P80 one on my own. I would have got the Wilson one just because Wilson and they work with 1911s, and I would have just opted for that. And I would have been, I would have missed out on what is, I'm not going to say a superior grip, what is a more preferable grip to me. So, honestly, take everything I said with a grain of salt. Get them each for yourself. They're both this, around the same MSRP. They're both around 60 bucks. Try each of them for yourself. See which one's better for you. See what you like. I gave you the pros and cons as I see it. Uh, and if you think I'm full of shit, then you know, please comment below and let me know. I'd love to, I love, not argue, but I'd love to debate it. Uh, like I said, I've seen a lot of videos of people, they shit on one or the other, and it's like, oh, this one's trash. And it's like, well, it's not trash. Uh, you can see in the video how well you can shoot this thing. And this one, too, she didn't shoot bad either. It's just not my preference. Anyways. If you made it this far, thanks for watching the video. Thank you for putting up with my atrocious new uh, New England accent. And please, please keep training. Go to a match or something.